Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from dancetube.tv and if you're new around these parts then you can expect brutally honest tech reviews on the channel. I've made it my mission to help tech enthusiasts unlock their creative potential with technology and today we're checking out the DJI Air 2S. This is my before you buy the DJI Air 2S. Everything you need to know, good, bad or mediocre. I've reviewed a lot of drones in my time, and I was not expecting the DJI Air 2S to come out next. I was expecting maybe the Mavic 3 Pro, or maybe a Phantom at some point. I don't even know if they're continuing the Phantom. Let me know in the comments below if you think they're going to continue with it. But we've got the DJI Air 2S nonetheless, and I'm very excited about this drone. It's actually not just a small incremental upgrade. There's a lot of exciting things going on here. Now, if you're interested in the Air 2S, I will have some links in the description below to check it out on both the DJI store and the Amazon store. So check those out and I do get a little kickback if you do purchase through those links. It adds no cost at all to your purchase, but it just really helps out the channel. So check those out if you're interested in the Air 2S. And just before we jump into the video, I wanna give a massive shout out to the D1 store. If you check out that website, d1store.com.au, I do have a coupon code to save 10% off your drone, camera, and accessory purchases, which is massive when you think about how expensive drones can be. 10% off is quite a sizable chunk. So the code is MMAFB, stands for Mavic Mini Australia Facebook. It's a group that I run over on Facebook, Definitely go and join it if you haven't already, but that's M-M-A-F-B and you'll save 10% off your purchases on the D1 store. And here it is. This is the Air 2S. Such a gorgeous drone, but no real character compared to the other recent drones that have come out from DJI. They're all standardized now. They all look the same, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I don't know how I feel about it. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. But the two features that stand out here, or maybe the three features, we've got the bug eyes on top, which make it look a little different. And we've got that nice one inch sensor on the front there, which we've only seen in the Mavic 2 Pro before. The other thing, those orange tips, which you can see here, it just kind of stands out and shows you that's a different drone. But besides that, they all look the same. Mavic Mini, Mavic Pro, Mavic Air, they all look pretty much the same. Don't know how I feel about that. The other thing when it comes to aesthetics is the new controller. Now we saw this in the Mavic Air 2. We also saw it with the Mini 2, the Mavic Mini 2. I know they've dropped the Mavic name, but it's still a Mavic in, in my eyes. So this controller here, this updated new controller, which at first I wasn't a fan of, just looking at the videos, for whatever reason it didn't sell me. Now that I've got it in my hands and I've used it for the last couple of drones I've owned, I'm really, happy with this. I think it's a big improvement over the original controller and there's a few things I really love about it. Firstly, you don't have to worry about those antennas. You don't flip those up at all. It's all built in to the body itself. I also really love how the thumbsticks just tuck down the bottom there. I love the feel of the controller. It, it's nice and like wide enough for large hands and small hands, but it's also kind of thick enough as well. It just feels really solid in your hands. But the main thing I love, honestly, the greatest thing is well, two things almost. You lift that up and nice, you know, nice size on that. You can really get most phones in there. You can't get iPads or other tablets. You have to get like an extension piece, but you can get most phones in there. Pretty much every phone I would imagine would fit in there. I love the cable management, how it just tucks down here. Hello, how you going? And then the big thing is that you can still keep your phone in its case. You don't have to take it out. Previously, other drones, you'd have to take it out of the case. It would be just a whole additional process. Now, slap it in while it's in the case, cable tucks behind, and you're ready to go. It's a really nice controller. No change over the last two that I've tested. I think it's the exact same controller, but a nice update over some of the other controllers that I'm sure if you're gonna upgrade to the Air 2S, you've probably been using the previous controller from DJI. Now, a fun fact about the batteries. You can use the Mavic Air 2 batteries in the Air 2S. So for me, for example, I'm about to sell my Mavic Air 2, but if I wanted to, I could have an additional like three batteries. I could have six batteries if I really wanted for the Air 2S. So for whatever reason, if you want to upgrade from the Air 2 to the Air 2S and you want to keep some batteries maybe, 
then why not? They all work and they work in the same charging hub as well. It's actually really nice to see that they just all work together. There's no change. A lot of the time you'll see a new battery, a new controller, you've got to change everything. You've got to change the cables or the battery charging hub or something, but not this time. And there it is. So after looking through what you get in the bag, like there's all the accessories that you get if you get the fly more combo, you get the charging hub, you get a few other things, but the main thing you're coming for, it's like the main show, you know? The, all the side acts, they're fine, they're fun, but this is the main show. It's the drone, the controller, and the batteries as well, obviously. And the drone, as I said before, very similar design, but we have that gorgeous one inch sensor on the front there. It looks pretty much identical from my experience. I don't have it on hand, but from my memory, the Mavic 2 Pro one inch sensor and this guy are the same. The only difference is that the Mavic 2 Pro has Hasselblad on it and it's using like Hasselblad color science. That's the only difference. But the crazy thing is this guy here shoots 5.4K where the Mavic 2 Pro, the more expensive drone, only shoots 4K. How does that work, guys? I have no idea, because I know the Mavic 2 Pro is a five inch sensor, five inch, 5K sensor, but for whatever reason, they've just kept it for the Mavic 2S, the Air 2S, I don't get it. Anyway, that's marketing for you, I guess. They're trying to upgrade, make people come over to here. And then in a couple of months, the Mavic 3 Pro will come out with 27 million K. Do you think we need that? What is the next upgrade, guys? What are we going to next? 8K, 6K? Is 5K exciting? Let me know in the comments below. Like I said at the beginning, I've flown a lot of drones and a lot of DJI drones at that. And it's still to this day is remarkable how well they've designed the folding mechanisms. They just feel so solid. And for all the other drones I've tested, they really do stand the test of time. They're super robust, nice and sturdy, and I have no issues with the folding mechanism. At this point, it feels like they've perfected it almost. It's just gorgeous, and it feels high quality. There's no issues with the quality of this drone at all. As you can see, you get a bunch of sensors on here, as well as the bug eyes on the front, and it's very, very safe to fly this drone. Like, it's got so many safety precautions with all these sensors that it's gonna be extremely hard to crash this thing. You have to be really trying to crash it, and then even then it probably won't crash. <laughs> Moving on to the video quality and the photo quality from this drone, as you'd expect, being a relatively like high-end prosumer drone at this point, you could really call it a prosumer drone, it's 5.4K. The video quality is great, it's phenomenal. I've been really happy with it. Um, you have to be aware that a lot of editing programs, if you're not paying for it, if you've got a free version of DaVinci, or if for whatever reason you've cracked a version of it, or you don't have a good editing program, you can't really play around with that 5.4K footage. You can't even export for the most part. So just think about if you actually need that. A lot of the time 4K is enough, and a lot of editing programs are actually maxed out or capped at 4K. So just keep that in mind before you look at the numbers and go, oh, that's so much better than the other drones. But honestly, even like the 1080p footage is phenomenal from this thing. The 4K footage looks great and is my go-to. I pretty much use 4K all the time, but the 5.4K just takes it to that next level. The dynamic range, the colors, everything just pop. It's such an amazing camera system and the photos are just next level as well. The detail in the image is phenomenal. One of the new calling cards of the Air 2S, which is exclusive to the Air 2S, is called Master Shot. Now, I've done a video on this on the channel already. I'll be adding a link in the description and some sort of card that will pop up somewhere. But this is really cool. At first I thought, eh, it's a bit gimmicky. Who knows the practicality of it? But Master Shot is awesome. And in my video, I only tested it in 1080p. I can confirm you can shoot 4K Master Shots. And what they are is you choose a location, something, a person, a vehicle, whatever it is. And you just press start. You can change a few parameters but it will automatically start taking dynamic shots for you. All different movements and stitch it together into a fun little video or you can have those separate shots in a whole like two and a half minute video and they'll all be separate movements that you can cut and use as you see fit. It's really, really fun and honestly it adds, it makes it easy really. Like if you're a professional or if you're starting out, you can get high quality next level footage with just a tap of a button, it's crazy. Jumping back to the controller. Now, when it's compact, it's beautiful. It looks like just such a nice little design, but it packs a punch. You can get 12 kilometers of range from this guy. I would recommend following your rules and regulations and laws in your local area and keep the drone in line of sight to be safe. But 
if you really need that extra range, maybe you're in a highly dense area where the transmission is just struggling, it just can't send a signal, then 12 kilometers of range is going to really help cut through those frequencies. Plus, that's just an amazing number. 12 kilometers of range from a drone, from a guy this small, crazy. So back to the drone and some of the other cool features of this guy here, it has obstacle sensing in four directions. So like I said, a really safe drone. It's hard to crash these things now. They're just remarkable. Honestly, like I've got more chance of dropping it now while holding it for a video than I do of actually ever dropping it out of the sky. It's just so remarkable at this point. The other thing that's really cool about this drone, it was something that DJI said um, a, f a while ago now, maybe a year ago. They said that all of their future drones, or upcoming drones will have AirSense. And hopefully you can see there's a badge there. This is an AirSense enabled drone. And I've enabled it through the settings. I've got a whole tips and settings video to show you how to enable that and some of the other key tips and settings. So there'll be like an interactive card somewhere and links in the description as well. But AirSense, at first I thought, I don't even know if it works in Australia. Like I enabled it, nothing happened, but it's popped up a few times now and it's been great to have a warning, to know that there's you know, a plane in the area. I had it the other day. I was flying up a mountain somewhere over near Mount Kutha and it was fine to fly there, but it popped up saying, oh, there's an aircraft in the area. So it gave me a chance to land, and then I waited for the plane to go and I could fly again. And it was just nice to have that as a peace of mind, just to know that it's got my back. It's gonna let me know if there's a plane in the area. That's really cool. The next thing I wanna see, which might be tricky, because then it's gonna be cluttering the airways, sending out signals, is to know about other drones in the area. Now, I'm sure that's a privacy issue. I'm sure people will hate that, but just in terms of purely on safety, which as people don't seem to think, DJI really do care about safety. Obviously they do, it's their livelihood, their drones are their bread and butter. So to have like additional safety, I think drones are more of a threat at the moment to drone pilots for good drone pilots that fly properly than like other planes in the area. Because for the most part, you're away from planes and helicopters and hopefully in the middle of nowhere if you want to get some amazing shots. I don't know what drone you've owned or what drones you've had your eyes on, but this guy here really does pack a punch. It's got almost everything you need in a drone. It shoots 4K 60, shoots 5.4K 30 frames per second. It's got all these other settings. It's got slow-mo, it's got master shots, it's got quick shots. It's really quite a remarkable piece of technology. So it depends what you're at. Like, you know, if you've never owned a drone before, this could be maybe too much. It could be like too much of a leap from nothing to this. But if you're looking for an upgrade, you know, if you've owned a previous Mavic Air or a Mavic Pro or even a Mavic Mini, this could be a phenomenal upgrade if you wanna take it a little bit more seriously and still have that compact form factor. The other crazy thing in my eyes is that, again, this kind of replaces the Mavic 2 Pro. You can shoot in D-Log, you can shoot 10 bit, like I said, 5.4K, it's a one inch sensor, 20 megapixels, megapixels for the photos. And again, like, I don't really know why you would go for the Mavic 2 Pro. You might as well go for this. It's a little cheaper and it's got probably more features. It's probably more exciting to be honest with you. So to me, it's kind of crazy. They've almost shot themselves in the foot by making their Mavic 2 Pro, which is meant to be a higher quality drone. They've kind of shot themselves in the foot there. It's, it's almost not as good as this guy. You also get all of the flight modes and options from previous drones, like I said, all of the slow-mo options. You get a lot of different photo options as well, hyperlapses. Um, you also get like active track, you get spotlight, you get point of interest, you get all the quick shot modes that we're used to, plus we get master shots. And it's all there, really. I don't think they've cut on anything. I don't think there's anything that we're missing in the Air 2S from other drones. Like it's got everything plus more. So it almost feels like their flagship drone at this point. It's crazy, I really don't have anything negative to say about the drone so far. They've really perfected the craft of creating a flying robot. Really, it's at the point where I can't really knock it. There's no negative I've had so far. The only thing is that the 5.4K files are a little tricky to edit and they're a little too big for my computer and I'd probably just use a 4K, you know, 30 or 25 frames file over a 5K file. That's the only thing, like I just don't know whether I care about 5K enough to go through the headache of doing that, or even, you know, converting the file, compressing it, like doing different activities, processes to get it to a point that it's usable. Like, I just don't know if I care that much about it. But, you know, this guy here, the controller itself, 
like I said before, it's 12 kilometers. It's actually OcuSync 3.0, so it's advanced. It's honestly like their top tier right now. It's better than the previous releases, and the fact that you get a 1080p transmission to your phone or to your tablet is a really big jump over previous drones that you probably owning you know if you're interested in this you've probably owned like an air or a pro or even a phantom and you're thinking about something a bit different you know this is really cool to have that 1080p transmission to your phone or tablet does make a big difference when you're you know framing a shot or just seeing the detail in the image it makes a big difference i've also got a video testing out the active track 4.0 on the channel and i've got it in the bypass mode so it actually like dynamically and intelligently moves around things that are in the way there's a whole video I've posted. There'll be a link below and a card somewhere. But that was remarkable to me as well. Like I've tested Active Track before and it's been great and I've had no issues. But to get it to the point where it can dynamically move around things, I'm really re impressed at this point. A lot of people have told me that the Skydio 2, I believe it is, is a lot better at tracking. But from my experiences with just DJI drones and a few other ones, I haven't tested the Skydio range. But from my DJI drone tests, it's the best active track, it's the best tracking I've seen on a drone. And really, I'm so excited to see where they're gonna go from here. You know, it's it's almost at the point where it is just autonomous. You almost don't need to do much. You know, even just looking at that master shot mode, it's, it's just a few taps. If you've got the subject scanning on, it will bring up a plus around something that you can track. Tap the plus and then tap start. It's two taps and you're in a master shot mode taking dynamic shots. They've made it so easy. It's kind of crazy. You almost don't need a drone pilot at this point. So honestly, I don't have much to knock about it besides the file sizes and maybe the price, I guess, but it's cheaper than the Mavic 2 Pro and it's better in my opinion. So like, it's a pretty good price. It's a really good offering, I think right here. I can't knock anything else. I had no issues. I thought that master shot was limited to 1080p. That would have been a massive limitation but you can shoot in 4K, so that's not a problem at all. All the other modes work perfectly fine, had no issues. It flies, as you would imagine a DJI would fly, DJI drone would fly, smooth, seamless, no issues. Just smooth through the air. It's just like butter gliding through that wind. It's phenomenal to see. Even to this day, I've flown hundreds of flights, and to still see this guy, you know, a drone, to see one of these little things take off, a flying robot, cutting through the sky, with ease. It's just still to this day remarkable to me. So yeah, I honestly like, I just don't know what to say. It's great. If you want to upgrade your drone and you've been waiting, I think this is the one to go for. I don't know what the Mavic 3 Pro is going to offer, but at this stage in the current climate of the drone world, this is the one you want. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. I really do appreciate all of your support. I think this is a phenomenal drone for people that want to upgrade, or if you've got the money and you're starting out, why not start at the top? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to have a fantastic day. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video and what you think of the Air 2S. And I'll chat to you in the next one. Peace out.